So a new programming language has been launched. It's called Kiva, Kiva Lang. And the big difference between it and other programming languages is that every variable, every variable is an associative array. So it's uh, an interpreted language. It's open source. It's free. It's easy to learn. And as I said, every single variable is an associative array. Now that gives you some interesting possibilities. Oh yes, one other thing, I designed it. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so Kiva Lang, Kiva Lang. Uh, so a new experimental programming language where every variable is an associative array. So recently I made a video about associative arrays. Uh, that's the uh, thumbnail for it there. You can find it here on my YouTube channel. And that got me thinking, what if there was a programming language where every variable was an associative array? So I started playing around with the whole idea and wrote this very simple inter um, first draft, really, first alpha version of the Kiva Lang, the key value language. It's experimental and it's open source. OK, let's just dive quickly into some of the ideas. OK, so let's start with some simple examples. OK, uh, you'd expect this print. Hello, world. OK, that's exactly what you're going to get. Hello, world. Uh, I is equal to one. I is equal to I plus one. Print I. No surprise. It's going to be two. But now if we say I open square bracket dog is equal to four, the number of legs a dog has. Now notice this is the variable I which we've previously used for i is equal to 1 and i is equal to i plus 1. And we can also say i open square brackets hen, so these are associative arrays, uh, is equal to 2, 2 legs on a hen. If we now do print i, we see something different. What we've got here is three different variables. So the default one with no index, just a blank index, is 2, and that comes from our i is equal to i plus 1. For dog, we've got four, and for hen, we have two. And of course, we can do, for example, print i open square bracket hen, okay? And that will give us two, as we'd expect. Now, at this point, if we try to do i is equal to i plus one, what's going to happen? We get an error because we've now got a full associative array. It's got three elements in it, and it doesn't know what it should do. Now, we could make it that it increments the default one. So it could increment this one here of the, you know, the default key with two and go to three. But now you're going to get yourself into some ambiguity. When you're writing a, a software, writing a computer program, you don't want the, the things to behave differently, and you don't know what's going on. So It'd be very easy to do that, but that would introduce so many bugs so quickly because sometimes you, you're incrementing one thing, sometimes you're incrementing another thing. So we keep it clear. Well, it's only got one item in it, and it's the default item. You can increment it, subtract it, whatever. When it's already a full associative array, you have to obey some other rules. Okay, so let's quickly look at the if statement. Really what you'd expect, r is equal to 2. If r is less than 5, print pass, else print fail. Obviously, r is less than 5, so you're going to get pass out on the screen. OK, so look at four loops, x dog, four, four legs on a dog, x duck, two, two legs on a duck, x centipede, 100 legs. And now here's the for loop, 4i in x, print i, you're going to get 4 to 100. The values of those three uh, elements in the array in the order they were created, not sorted or anything like that, in the order that they were created. Another variation is to print out the key of i, and that will print out the key here, not the, the value. So if you ran that, you'd get dog, duck, centipede, again in the order that it was created. While loops work exactly as you'd expect, c is equal to 1, while c is less than or equal to 10, print c, c is equal to c plus 1. This will go round and you get 1 through to 10. You can define functions in key lang. So here is a function add x and y and we return x plus y. So if you call print add 10, 20, well, that's going to return 30, print out 30, and that's exactly what you get. You can define more complicated functions here. For example, we're returning an associative array. So xA is equal to 11, xB is equal to 22, return x, z is equal to F1, that's the name of the function, function 1, print z, you're going to get 
uh, A of 11, B of 22. That's the associative array that it defined and returned. Now, one good example of how you could use associative arrays is using the sieve method to find prime numbers. The idea being that every prime number you find is actually a factor of every other composite number. So therefore, if you already know the prime numbers up until a particular point, you can test them against those. Uh, and if it can't be divided by any of those, then it must be a new prime. And so basically, I've got this very small program here that works using Kiva Lang to find those prime numbers. And if you ran it, you'd get the answer from here. We're looking starting at two, uh, and then we want the number, we want 10 of them. Len of P gives you the length of that array. So when you found 10 prime numbers, that's when we stop. So two here, two to 29, the first 10 prime numbers. So let's just look at the Civ program, Civ.kv. Okay, here is the program as I've shown you, and you can run it just by giving it the uh, name of the file, the script, and it's gonna run that, and there you go. To, through to 29, those uh, prime numbers using the sieve method. Okay, so how does it work? Well, we start by giving it two for free. So there's the first number is two. Then we say the next one we're gonna check is three. We then got this while loop that keeps on going until we found 10 prime numbers, until the length of the list of prime numbers is, te is 10 or more. And then what happens is in each one of those, we have this other for loop that goes through each one in the list of prime numbers and checks to see whether it's divisible using the mod uh, function. If it comes back and you find out it's divisible, then you mark the flag. At the end of that, if you've gone through all your prime numbers and nothing has been found to be divisible, then you found a new prime number. So you add that. There you go, you're adding that to the list of prime numbers. So P of N is equal to N. And then finally, you increase N to test the next number, four, five, six, seven, and so on. And then finally, you do four I in P and you print them all out. Okay, so the Kiva Lang uh, interpreter works. It's, it's up and running uh, as an experimental uh, kind of alpha code, as you saw. It's written in C, around two and a half thousand lines. The major components are a tokenizer, uh, a parser that generates an abstract syntax tree. Now that's a, a tree-shaped representation of the code that is convenient to execute. I won't go into the technology behind how you write an interpreter uh, right now. And then the execution engine that parses that abstract tree and then absolutely executes it. And I do all that in around two and a half thousand lines of code. Now it's extensible. The, to the tokenizer, parser, and execution engine can be enhanced by adding to the main C code. Take that two and a half thousand lines, you can add it, we can add in more things to do more interesting things. But there's also a standard library which is actually very easy to extend without worrying about the tokenizer and the and the tree and the execution. There is this kind of very simple way to say, hey, I want to add a function that will do whatever. And already you've seen me use some of those len, key, and mod. So these are to do, both of these to do with arrays, these are to do with mathematics, uh, are already there. And of course, you could very simply see we could add in a whole bunch of functions to do with uh, mathematics, to do with uh, arrays. You could sort arrays, you could reverse arrays. We could add in different, you know, uh, different uh, max, min functions, whatever we want to add in. These could all be added, string lengths. Uh, you know, anything you wanted could be added quite easily to the standard library without you having to understand too much of the main tokenizer, parser, uh, and execution code. So what is missing? Well, too much to, to mention here. There's lots uh, to do uh, for it. For example, just because I was putting this, it doesn't support negative numbers at the moment. So if you do get negative number, it, it doesn't work. Uh, and and or are not supported yet in if statements, for example. So loads of stuff to add. This is really alpha experimental quality to look at the ideas of associative arrays primarily. There's loads of stuff that could be added to the interpreter itself to make it a much more mature language. If you start writing Kiva code, you'll soon find out the limitations of what you can and can't do, what the interpreter can and can't do, of course. Uh, well, what else? The interpreter itself can be improved. There's probably some memory leaks because there's various allocations of memory and freeing of memory that goes on. There's way too many fixed size buffers like max line length or max tokens per line. And if you go over those, you're going to get memory corruptions. It's going to go wrong. It's just going to crash everything. So they're all in there now now because it's experimental alpha quality and it wouldn't be too hard to create a line of code that was longer than the max line and just the whole thing would just go pear-shaped. 
So also it needs support for multi-dimensional associative arrays, for example. That would be an interesting thing to add from the Kiva Lang point of view, not necessarily from the interpreter point of view, but how does Kiva Lang as a language support that? So what's next? Well, it'd be nice to add some JSON functionality because JSON fits really well with associative arrays. And this depends massively on support from the open source community. I'm very happy to invest more time in this, but if no one's interested in it, and there's no reason why it necessarily should be, it's quite an interesting idea. Great idea, Gary, nice experiment, but thanks very much. I'm happy with that. And if no one else does take an interest in it, then it will just stay as it is now because obviously I'm focused on making my next videos for Gary Explained. However, if there is a spark of interest, then uh, then I'll be happy to be part of that community and let's see where this uh, language could go. Okay, so there you go, Kiva Lang. Just a muse of mine, an experiment. Very good, Gary, pat yourself on the back. Let's just kill it there, fine by me. Or has it got potential? Do you think it's interesting? Would you like to contribute? Would you like to play with it? Well, love to know your thoughts in the comments below. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explained. I really hope you enjoyed this look at Kiva Lang. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then hey, stick around, subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.